Hi, this is Brass Check, and I really don't want to be covering this Jeffrey Epstein story, but as usual, the mainstream media is doing such a pathetic job. Uh, somebody's got to do something. Um, yesterday, 24 hours ago, uh, I said, great, you found the passport. What about the visas on the passport? Well, it took the, um, the combined money and intelligence and clout of the, all the major news networks to get together to finally, 25 hours later, uh, answer that simple question. And the answer is, yeah, that was a real passport, just like I said. Uh, not a fake passport. Maybe his name was fake. But that was a real passport, and it had been used, and it had been used uh, tremendously, significantly. And the home address was Saudi Arabia, and some of the places that he traveled to included countries like uh, the UK. Oh, by the way, it was an Austrian passport. It was not a Saudi Arabian passport. Just an example of the epic sloppiness and carelessness of the uh, mainstream news media. That was the first report they came out with. That, I have to say, I have to admit, that would have been pretty amazing if he had a Saudi Arabian passport. I mean, oh my God, do people, I mean, how ignorant are, are you American reporters? I just, I just, it, it boggles my mind. Um, but anyway, um, it only took them 24 hours to, uh, that's a daily beast, okay? Um, a daily beast, not even the mainstream news media. And NBC News, oh, the great NBC News, the amazing, unbelievable, packed with geniuses, NBC News, says that he used the passport to enter Saudi Arabia. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Um, the real question that people should, there's several questions that people should be asking is he had an address, a home address in Saudi Arabia on, on the passport. That's question number one. Have any of these geniuses with their vast international network of news gatherers gone to the address and seen if there's actually a real place there and what kind of place it is? Uh, I'm, I don't know, but I'm going to guess he had a place in Saudi Arabia. So now we've got to ask the question, what the hell is going on? How did this guy have a house in Saudi Arabia? How did he travel to and from Saudi Arabia with a, uh, a passport issued? Issued a real passport, not a fake passport, folks. A real passport issued by the government of Austria. That's a big deal. Yeah, it's one thing to you know buy a you know a fake jerky passport. This was a real one issued by the government of Austria. So what was he doing in Saudi Arabia? We know for sure he was going to Saudi Arabia because he had the visas. Okay. So what was he doing in Saudi Arabia? Nobody's asking. Nobody's even asking if that address in Saudi Arabia was real. That's how brain dead the U.S. news media is. They can't ask even the most basic fundamental questions. So he was traveling back and forth between France, Spain, the United Kingdom, and Saudi Arabia in the 1980s. Now, how do you get a passport? How do you get the uh, State Department or whoever issues passports in Austria to give you a real passport? Well, you have somebody on the inside do that for you. Because this, again, this was, I'm going to guess, this was a real passport, not a faked passport. It was a real passport. So how do you do that? You have someone on the inside. Who has people on the inside? Just hold that question. Who would have a motivation to have this guy traveling back and forth between Saudi Arabia and Europe? I thought he was a genius hedge fund manager in New York, just racking up the big bucks with his really smart brain. No. He was doing business in Saudi Arabia, it appears. So I'm going to assume that he had a place in Saudi Arabia. I'm going to assume it was a nice place in Saudi Arabia. So who would be motivated to have 
a guy named Jeffrey Epstein, a Jewish guy from New York, traveling into and out of Saudi Arabia on a valid Austrian passport with a fake identity. Who, who would have the juice to get that done? And who would have the motivation to get that done? And why was he even there? In all these great, the New Yorker did a report on him, Vanity Fair did a report, all these genius reporters. They know everything about this guy. They've been tracking his every move for 10 years. They didn't know he was going back and forth between Europe and Saudi Arabia. This guy's an idiot, by the way. Wow. Wow, did he screw up. And they're going to they're gonna bury him. I think we'll see. We'll see tomorrow. T- uh, Thursday is the day we find out if he gets if he gets um, uh, bail or not. And I'm telling you, the Manhattan Correctional Center, run by the feds, is a miserable, miserable place to be for an extended period of time. If he doesn't get out of there, um, he's going to have a rough rough life. All right, so let's go back. Let's, let's do the thinking that NBC and um, CNN and Fox and the New York Times and the Washington Post won't do, can't do, or, or won't do. Who has the juice to get a foreign government to issue a passport to somebody under a fake name a real passport under a fake name, and who has the motivation to have somebody traveling back and forth between Europe and Saudi Arabia and assuming, and this is a guess, that Epstein actually did have a place in Saudi Arabia. What kind of place was it? I'm going to guess it was a nice place. So I'm, I'm sort of stretching this out because I know there's a lot of intelligent people listening to this who are starting to figure out what's going on here. An intelligence agency can get somebody a real passport because they will have somebody on the inside everywhere, a big intelligence agency. Let's see. Would it be the Russian intelligence agency? No. Would it be the Chinese intelligence agency? No. Would it be the UK intelligence agency? It could, but I don't see why. So that, that kind of narrows it down, doesn't it? There's a U.S. intelligence agency, and there's an Israeli intelligence agency. Who had the ability and the means to get this scumbag his own passport under a fake name? He might have pulled it off himself, but you know, even if you have a lot of money, it's, you know, who do you go to? How do you get these things done? If you're in the intelligence world, the intelligence community... It's a matter of course. You just pick up the phone. Hey, Hans, we need a passport. Yes, sir. Done. That's how hard it was. Now, why Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia? Well, it's a little known fact, (laughs) I guess, to the major news media, that there's a lot of people in Saudi Arabia with a lot of money. And they're idiots. And they are the most fat, juicy target of scams known to man. So if you were a scammer, like Jeffrey Epstein clearly was, uh, you would you would want to have a be the path to Saudi Arabia. What else do we so he could have been there just simply scamming rich idiot Saudi Arabian princes, of which there are many. And you can't fathom the money these guys have and how stupid they are with it. So he might have just been there scamming Israelis. I mean, excuse me, oops, I I, 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 uh, misspoke. Scamming Saudis. That may be one reason he has there. But how do you get in with Saudis? You know, you can't just show up with a business card and a nice shoe shine and get these guys' attention. You need an intention grabber. 
What do we know about the Saudis? They're sick perverts, the royal family, the extended royal family. Just guessing, do you think maybe the ability to show up with blondes from Florida, teenage blondes from Florida in Saudi Arabia would have been a door opener for Mr. Epstein? Possibly. Now, it might not have been the business. I don't think you're going to make millions or billions uh, in that kind of business. But you sure could open the doors to a lot of rich Saudi Arabian perverts, which is why you would need your own place in Saudi Arabia. He had an island, didn't he? He had a mansion in New York, didn't he? He had a big place in Florida, didn't he? What went on in those places? So that's the second reason he might have needed to travel to and from Saudi Arabia. The third reason is to be a... Who would have helped him do that? Same guys that helped him get the passport. That would be the Mossad or the CIA or a combination of both. What's the motivation? Well, they want to know what these Saudi Arabian princes are up to. And here's a guy that has a talent. Because the CIA, I don't know about the Mossad, probably the same, but I know this about the CIA. They love criminals. They love them. Because they're useful. So they found a criminal engaged in criminal activity that was useful to them. Because he had a special talent. A special talent that would get him in with the Saudi Arabian princes. Now, could have been the CIA, could have been Mossad, could have been a joint effort, who knows. But that's what it looks like to me. Now, I'm saying this at um, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, July 17th. Have you seen this? Maybe somebody else is talking about it somewhere. I can't say that nobody is, but I guarantee we're not going to see this uh, developed too fully in the New York Times. You've got to remember... <laughs> Let's understand something about Saudi Arabia. They're not into Jews. Okay? Like, a guy named Jeffrey Epstein traveling on his own passport ain't getting into and out of Saudi Arabia and ain't doing business with the Saudi Arabians. If you don't know that, do a little homework. In the 1980s, it was 100 times worse. Um, now, as for his act, if he did, in fact, inquire a home, how did he inquire it? Acquire it. You just go to a real estate broker and say, hey, I, I need a pad in Saudi Arabia in the 1980s? Are you freaking kidding me? Even today, you need personal approval of the, the Ministry of the Interior to purchase real estate in Saudi Arabia if you are not a citizen. That's in 2019 when they're, quote, opening up. 1980, they had money coming out of their ears. They didn't need your money. They didn't need anybody's money. They weren't opening any doors for anybody. So he had connections in Saudi Arabia, too. How do you get those connections in Saudi Arabia? See, these are all the questions that should be asked. This is, this is the hook. This, between this and Wexner, the, that guy out in Ohio who, who none of the news media wants to talk about, these are the big issues. And also um, his girlfriend, uh, Maxwell's father. Now, he died a long time ago, but that guy was completely in uh, with the uh, was it with Israeli intelligence. I mean, on, on a very, very, very high level, he was a major Israeli asset. So I don't know if it was the CIA. I don't know if it was the Mossad. But if you look at the, what's going on here, somebody was able to get this guy a real passport from Austria. Uh, he may very well have owned a property in Saudi Arabia. I guarantee it was in a studio apartment. If he did. And there's only three reasons for him to go to Saudi Arabia. Scam the Saudis, procure for the Saudis, spy for the U.S. or the Israelis, or both. Now, he could have been doing all three. Right? Why not? In fact, he probably was. That's my take based on, on what's 
apparent and obvious. And we'll see how long it takes the mainstream news media with its thousands of reporters and millions of dollars and connections all over the world. Let's see how long it takes them to ask these basic questions.